Hi, welcome back to a little bit of Common Crazy. My name is Jennifer and today I am really excited to share with you this super fun DIY and it is so budget friendly. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I am so glad that you are here and I really do hope that you will take a moment and introduce yourself in the comments below. And if you are returning as always, thank you so very much. If you don't know it, you can find me on Instagram. It is a little bit of common crazy over there just like it is here. And over there, I am starting to post some mini little videos that I don't share over here, as well as some more personal things. So if that interests you, I would love to see you over there. Also, if you have not hit that subscribe button and you enjoy a budget decor and DIY, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button. Today's video is sponsored by Hawaiian Sunsets. I'm excited to share with you their SPF 50 umbrella and parasol. You guys, this is so personal for me. Earlier this year, I had to go into the dermatologist and have a huge chunk of skin removed from my back because I am one of those people that is affected by skin cancer because of not protecting my skin earlier in my life. So now I take my SPF very seriously and I encourage everyone in my life to do the same. And so when I saw that this was an SPF 50 umbrella that also protects you from the UVA and the UVB, I was sold. So not only can I use this as a parasol to protect me on a non-rainy day, but I can use it as an umbrella to protect me on a rainy day. And anyone that knows Texas weather knows that we get both on the same day and it can come back and forth. So this is the perfect thing to keep in my car for any day at all times here in Texas. And I would love it if you would go and check them out. They do have their own website, but they're also on Amazon. And anytime anything is on Amazon, that is just a bonus. I love shopping on Amazon. So let me tell you a couple of things that I love about this umbrella. One thing is that they have this really neat larger handle, so it makes it very comfortable for you to hold on to. It's super easy to close. All you have to do is push your hand on the top and on the handle, and it will pop closed super fast. It's just a nice little snap, just like that. I also love the different designs that they have. So mine is black on the outside, but as you can see, I have a pretty little pink flower underneath. So kind of like a little bit of a peekaboo fun thing for me to stare out, but very classy on the outside. And they do have somewhere if you prefer a pattern on the outside of your umbrella, you can get that as well. But honestly, the biggest selling point for me is the fact that it is an SPF 50 umbrella. So I would love it if you would take a moment and go check them out. Of course, I will leave all their information down in the description box below. And let's move on to this DIY. So the very first thing I needed to do was to get some wood. So I headed to Home Depot and I was so excited when I saw that Home Depot had a cart full of 70% off wood. These are pieces that have, for some reason, maybe they had a bad cut or something like that. And believe it or not, they had the four by four wood that I needed and it worked out perfectly. So I was able to get a six foot piece for just about $2. I could not believe it. But even if I couldn't get that, it's still such a good bargain to be able to get this wood. I plan to use these as Christmas gifts, and so I can get three sets of dice out of one six foot piece of wood. After I got the wood and I came home, it was time for me to cut it. One thing you do need to know if you don't know it is it doesn't actually measure four by four, it measures three and a half, and so those were the cuts that I made. And I chose to go ahead and use my power tool it makes it so much easier. And so I pulled out my miter saw. It does have a 10 inch blade and I cut at the three and a half inch mark. I was trying to come up with an alternative for you. So I did order a handheld saw and a miter box from Amazon. But let me tell you, this was one, a waste of my money and a lot of work. If you wanna go that route, you can, but I would suggest you just find a really good friend that will help you out instead if you don't happen to have a miter saw. Don't don't try to hand cut these you guys it was that would be your workout for the entire week it was that rough so after i got all of my pieces cut out i went in with some sandpaper and i rounded out all the edges and the corners again i went ahead and i did hand sand these but if you do happen to have like an electric sander that would make this a much faster process i wasn't too worried about them being perfect i just wanted them to be pretty smooth and to smooth out those edges and those corners. 
That is a personal preference, but it gave me the look that I was going for. When the time comes to paint them, my only tip for this is to make sure that you are using contrasting colors. This would be a good time to go in and choose paints that maybe you're ready to just kind of get rid of and finish up. So go through your paints and pull out the ones that you would like to finish out and use those, but make sure that you are using contrasting colors. So in this case, I went ahead and I just used a simple black and white, but again, I did mention I'm making multiples of these and I do plan on using more colors than just the black and white. I might actually just try a stain on some of them and I think it would be fun to even have some maybe that are like a red and white, um, if somebody has like a sports team that they love, I think it would be really fun to incorporate those colors as well. Just go with whatever you think is fun for whomever you are giving it to. When I hit, after I had my base coat of paint on, I only did one layer because I wasn't really too concerned with it being completely coated or completely opaque. I was okay if I could still see the grain of wood through. Again, that is a personal preference. But to me, I thought it still looked really good to see some of those grains or some of that wood swirl all the way through. So after I had all that done, it was time to add my dots. And so I went in with this little foam pouncer. I picked this up in a pack from Walmart. This was the three, four size. You can also sometimes find things like this similar at Dollar Tree. And I use again, the black paint. Now I do make sure that I sponge off as much as I can with this so that I am not oozing out with the paint. So as I go on with my circle, I first go straight down and I press down and then I do a twisting motion and I turn it around to help me get the best circle possible. I also make sure that I do my corners first and then I do any of my dots that are in the center after I have my corners. And I found that that was the easiest way for me to do it without having to put any marks on it or anything like that and I felt like my dots came out pretty even and I was quite happy if you are wanting yours to be perfect and absolutely lined up of course you can always go in with a ruler and a pencil if you prefer to do that the last thing I would recommend is that you seal it seal it seal it seal it I cannot stress that enough you absolutely need to because of where these will be used you they will be used and abused that is the hope so a couple of things I can recommend is because this is a chalk paint, one way to help kind of seal in a chalk paint is that you can use a wax on top. So this is the Waverly's wax and this will help seal it in. So this is one layer that I would do first and then I would go in with another form of a sealer as well, just as an extra caution. So you could use Mod Podge, that is one way, and I know quite a few crafters that tend to have that on hand, and if that's what you have on hand, you can use that. And I don't know if it really matters which Mod Podge that you use, but Mod Podge does tend to leave a coating that you can see. So my personal preference actually would be a spray sealer. The one that I have is this Rust-Oleum. It's just a clear matte enamel, and it's just a protective spray. I would suggest that you actually use multiple um, layers. So I went in and I actually sealed mine three times just to be extra cautious because I want these to be used and I think that's the best way to do it. There are different sealers that you can get. I don't necessarily have a favorite. This is just the one I have on hand so it is the one that I grabbed. So if there's a different one that you have that you've already used for other projects by all means use what you have. That's always my best tip for you. So an alternative to doing one of the wooden die is you could pick up these die from the Dollar Tree. They come two to a pack and you could pick up three packs of these. I think these are still really great because they are larger and they are fun and you can still do these like outside or even on inside and they're not going to hurt anything. These are just a foam, but they're different than having just your small little handheld one-handed die. So you would still need like a container in order to put them in. So pick up three packs of those could make a really fun gift idea as well. So this is an alternative for anybody that is not comfortable using power tools or doesn't have access to a power tool. So the very last thing that I have as a suggestion, my point in using the yard dice is specifically for Yahtzee. And so you can go on Amazon or you can even go into like Walmart or something like that. And they sell just the scorekeeping cards individually. And they just come in a box on a pad like this. And I would include this 
as part of the gift that you are giving, if you are giving this as a gift. So I would include this with the dice in a basket. And as far as I'm concerned, that is a complete gift that you can give somebody. And personally, if I was the receiver of that gift, I think it would be a fantastic gift. I hope that you love these yard dice. I know I'm not the first person to ever show these before, but I hope I gave you a few tips that would help you feel confident in creating them yourself and thinking of creating them as gifts for Christmas. This is a great time to start thinking ahead for those items and planning gifts for those people that you love in your life. Thank you so much again for stopping by today. I absolutely appreciate it as always. If you have not hit that subscribe button, please do so. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up and please go visit Hawaiian Sunsets and check out their umbrellas. I do appreciate them sponsoring this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.